I look a lot younger than I actually am, but like to most people, I come off as male, so it's fine. Like I'd rather be a 12 year old dude than like a 20 year old woman, so. It's one of those things where like it just becomes second nature after a while. I'm very conscious of the way that I dress because I know that certain clothes will accentuate my hips, accentuate the narrowness of my waist. The other thing that gets integrated into your daily life is that once every two weeks you have to inject testosterone. And for a long time I had a nurse doing it. And I basically was very frustrated with myself because I was like, okay, you're gonna be doing this for the rest of your life. You can't go to a nurse every two weeks. You have to know how to do this yourself. So I eventually taught myself how to inject the testosterone. I'm also, I'm very proud of myself when I do it because, um, I don't know, it just, it gives me a sense of pride. I was a depressed little kid, man. Like, I, I had problems from like, an early age, like my, my parents took me to Disneyland when I was like four and I was like depressed at Disneyland and like that, my mother claims that that's like the earliest she can trace back my mental illness. Like I was depressed at Disneyland because like I had had so many deaths in the family and like the exact quote I guess was how can I be happy when everyone I love is dead. My mother at first thought that there was something medically wrong with me, so she took me to the primary care doctor and she just said, oh, it's just stress. I didn't get a formal diagnosis until much later. I think I did see a therapist at the age of 13, but I never saw a psychiatrist. It really got bad at like 16 um, because I launched into like a full-blown manic episode. I was very irritable. I um, was never violent towards any human being, but I was aggressive. I was first taken to a nurse practitioner and she like talked to me for five minutes and then gave me some drugs. It was not a good time because the nurse practitioner wasn't supposed to have done that. But then I, I was eventually uh, re-diagnosed with bipolar one by uh, Lucille Packard. I basically, I went to um, the psych hospital when I was 17 and they transferred me to Edgewood, which is a children's facility in San Francisco. And then I turned 18 and I had to leave and I went to Literal House. And so the case manager there set me up with Momentum Services as I left. And I was in the transitional age youth program for a long period of time. It's. It's been a really difficult uh, road for me as far as discovering myself. There was a part of me that knew from at least the age of 15, but I didn't know how to express um, the feelings that I was experiencing. It's really easy to just think of yourself as broken. Um, and the word bipolar disorder, the existence of that diagnosis basically tells me that there are other people that that go through this and I'm not the only one. I have been in remission for three years now. Um, and it's a combination of the right meds and getting to bed at the same time every night and making sure I eat. And it's work. It's, I, I don't want to put out the idea that it's not work to stay in recovery. You probably love someone who has a mental illness and it's, it's ridiculous that we see this in such a negative light nowadays. decided, I think when I was 19, I changed my career path because I was very angry 
that more people in mental health didn't understand the struggle of, of what a mentally ill person goes through. And so I was, I was very upset that there weren't more people with diagnoses working in mental health. And then I realized that like, I have the power to change that. So I, um, I decided that I was going to become a therapist. You know, I'm working on that degree very slowly, um, but surely. I specifically want to become a gender therapist for transitional age youth who may be questioning. Um, but I'm really open to like anything involving like Tay individuals. You know, like things make me happy that sound like really dumb to people who have never gone through what I've gone through. Like, um, I get really happy when I go to buy food and the cashier is like, well, here's your change, sir. And I'm like, like that just makes me irrationally happy. Like, and it's so dumb because like, Liter like, they, they just got it correct, and I feel like that, that happiness of, of that particular brand is going to, like, go away eventually as I start to pass more towards 100% of the time, but I just, it's stupid how irrationally happy that makes me.